Welcome to LINK 2024. My name is Professor Vincent Costella and we are here with Marcus to discuss and to uh, share our experience with the artist device. Please, can you first tell us a little bit more about the device itself? Yeah, thank you. So the artist device is a completely new designed uh, device, uh, which is completely different to the previous version of the available artist. So it's an intracellular uh, device to treat, uh, of course, aneurysms. And if you look to the different features, uh, one for me, a very interesting feature is that is is composed of a dual layer mesh. And this mesh is made out of DFT wire. So the entire device is visible under fluoro. And then, the, of course, there are other interesting features which we also okay. can discuss. So the visibility for you is extremely, it's, an, it's a very important point. Uh, you had the chance to review the data from the Inspire registry. You are part of the steering committee. Can you please elaborate of the first result? I believe we are now at six months of follow-up. What can you tell us about it? Yes, correct. So the Inspire registry is an international multi-center registry in order to look at safety and efficacy of different devices like the RT's device. And here we looked at the first uh, 87 patients. Uh, now uh, more than 115 patients actually enrolled into the study. And the safety profile, I mean the procedural safety profile is really, really good. So if you look to the uh, device and procedure related adver severe adverse events, then you see that um, the procedure related adverse event is very low, it was 4%. So out of these uh, 87 patients, four had a complication, but three of these four cases had a site uh, complication, I mean the exercise, and only one patient had a device-related adverse event. So that was a patient uh, with an aneurysm that unfortunately ruptured during uh, the uh, moment when the RT's device was inserted into the catheter, but it was not deployed. So then uh, the, the colleagues, they decided not to uh, use the RT's device, they uh, coiled the aneurysm. But that was the, uh, that was the, the single device permanent related. Permanent morbidity related device. So how many percent is it if you take only this case on the case series? Less than 1%? So it, is, it is 1% regarding device related complications. In total, to, if you look to all neurological complications, then there was another aneurysm rupture, but this aneurysm was not treated with the RT's device. So, okay. so yeah. The safety profile looks good. Uh, if you compare this RT's, this new intracircular device, with the other family of intracircular device we have now on the market, what would be your, I mean, your tip and tricks or comparison to help the newcomers to, to embrace this technology? Well, basically, if you have experience in using intracellular devices, I think then uh, the ease of use of this device is very high. It's very, very similar to use uh, it compared to the other available ones. Uh, I think the main difference from my uh, experience is that it conforms very well to the aneurysm itself. So, and this is also what we see in the data. So, for example, if you look to the number of resheating and uh, new attempts or additional attempts in order to deploy it inside the aneurysm, this number was super low. So, in 50%, it was just one attempt. I have maybe another reason for these good results is that a large number of cases of artists has been sized using simulation software. A very large number of the series. So it's reducing the number of devices per procedure and making it extremely easy. I totally agree with, the, with you with the conformability and the softness of the device, especially at the, pro, the, at the beginning of the deployment, something that we are not used to have before. Well, so you, all, you also have a lot of experience in using the RT's device. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? So in our center, we used to use almost 100 intrasacular per year, and now we have introduced actress in our practice. Uh, at the moment, I have to say that we are very happy of this introduction. Safety profile, as you have explained from the registry, is extremely high. The first 30 cases, we have no adverse event, properly speaking. Uh, only one device could not be implanted because if it was a sidewall, it's very challenging. And we may understand that the trasacular was not a good indication for the case. But most of the case with sizing and simulation were uh, extremely easy to perform. 
Uh, the only advice I would give to the first users is to not maybe try to treat sidewall aneurysms with a, the main axis of the, uh, the, uh, the aneurysm being too tight compared to the, the axis with the parent artery because the device could not open because of the constraints. So I would, I would, I would keep it bifurcation aneurysms right now. And the other key point for me is the sizing, because if you want to have a good long-term follow-up with intrasacular, we know you need to have a good apposition. And now we have access to a new parameter that is the compression parameter, that is show you how much the, the device is compressed inside the aneurysm. And we know from the web experience, this could be one of the best protectors for recanalization. So I think we should not wait um, to have these this, this results. Uh, on the long term for up and we should start right now to, to size properly the implants in order to have a maximum compression of the implant into the sac. And if you compare the sizing, for example, with WEP, my impression is, I'm, uh, it would be interesting to know about your impression, is that you have to oversize it even a little bit more. Totally. Because of the conformability of the, the implants, we, we, uh, we saw that um, uh, the simulation is a little bit overestimating the bulging at the neck compared to the web, for example, where the simulation was a little bit underestimating the bulging at the neck. And I think this is totally, as you said, because of the conformability of the device that is occupying more space than expected into the aneurysms. Yeah. So it is reducing the impact into the parent artery. Okay, so the safety profile looks good, but Inspire just giving us at the moment six months of follow-up and we know that in intrasacular we need to have a long-term follow-up. When should we have the, uh, the Inspire registry is, um, for, is uh, planned to have a follow-up at one year, two years? What's the plan? So basically uh, it is of course the plan to have a longer follow-up. So at the moment the six months follow-up is limited. So we have it only available in 35 patients. But here the data so far is very encouraging, so the complete occlusion rate was 80%. So what we can summarize for this is that the ease of use of this device is very high, so the procedural safety profile is really good, and from the first results, and I think you have shown this with your short-term follow-ups as well, that the occlusion rate is high, but at the end, of course, we have to wait a little bit for longer uh, follow-ups until we can judge if it goes in the right direction or not. Exactly. And for this, sizing will be the key. Thank you. Thank you.